Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'll be talking to you about my presentation, Thinking Creatively About Abstract Concepts. Is there a connection? And my thesis supervisor is Dr. Stevenson. Of course, he cannot be here physically, but he's with me spiritually. What I didn't plan on talking about is Murphy's Law, but as you can see, it's always in play. So, my abstract for my experiment is that we're looking to see if there's a correlation between abstract and creative thinking. And this experiment assessed the participants' ability to answer abstract and creative questions. And we found that there was a moderate correlation between the scores. And this suggests a potential linkage between abstract and creative thinking. Um, the implications for understanding cognitive functions for reasoning may be within the workforce. And the study limitations are a small sample size, a narrow focus, and one aspect of creative thinking. Future research should explore the relationship between abstract and creative thinking more details to better understand how the possible is about creative thinking methods. So, this experiment aimed to explore the potential correlation between abstract and creative thinking methods. Both types of thinking are crucial in many fields, including art, design, science, and business. The ability to think abstractly and creatively is becoming increasingly important in the workforce, as many jobs require workers to solve complex problems and develop innovative solutions. In this presentation, we will discuss our study's methodology, results, and implications for understanding cognitive function and reasoning, particularly in the creative, uh, creativity driven fields. So, abstract concepts such as adventure refer to complex situations that do not possess a single visually guided object as a reference. Whereas concrete concepts do, like paper, they're grounded in the human centric realm where you can see it, physically touch it, and you might even uh, smell it. Concrete concepts are identifiable, grounded reference that can be experienced with human senses. Whereas abstract concepts are variable both within and spread across individuals as they evoke complex emotions and relations involving situations and experiences. However, Abstract concepts lack sensory motor experiences. This contrast between concepts lays the foundation for the conversation researchers are engaging in by exploring abstract thoughts, both of them and dimensionality. Creative thinking is essential in the sciences, arts, and is a central part of everyday life. It is something that can be developed through practice and training. Creative cognition is understood to be part of a set of mental processes that generate novel and useful ideas. Previous research suggests that the brain's right hemisphere is responsible for conceptualizing thoughts associated with creative thinking. This suggests that creative and abstract thinking might be physiologically linked due to the region of the brain in which they operate. This information also exposes the void in the information regarding the potential links between abstract and creative thought. The aim of this study is to answer the question Is there a correlation between one's ability to be creative and abstract? By answering this question, Information will be gathered to help determine if there's any difference in the ability to help individuals to think about abstract concepts. The potential findings in this study may illuminate ideas of cognitive function and reasoning that have yet been re uh, previously explored. And so, when conducting, before I conducted this experiment, I decided to, uh, to perform research on the background of abstract. The relationship between abstract and creative thinking has been a topic of interest in which psychologists and educators for decades. Some researchers argue that abstract thinking is a necessary precursor to creative thinking, while others suggest that creativity can occur without abstract thinking. A study by Prof. in 2006 found that creative individuals tend to think more abstractly than less creative individuals. But also noted that the relationship between abstract and creative thinking is complex and multifaceted. Other studies have explored the role of abstract thinking in specific creative domains, such as visual arts, music, and writing. Despite the growing body of research on abstract and creative thinking, there's still much to be understood of the nature of the cognitive processes. And so, when I performed this experiment, I started with 20 St. Edward's participants, freshmen from senior year. They were asked to complete a series of questions consisting of abstract and creative questions. Each response was scored on a scale of 1 to 10, with the higher score indicating greater abstract creative thinking abilities. And we analyzed the data with the Pearson correlation, uh, correlation coefficient to examine the relationship between these abstract and creative questionnaire scores. 
the limitations are a small sample size, and this sort of the right aspect of greater thinking. And as you can see here, sample questions from the questionnaire. On your left, you can see a abstract reasoning question in which participants were asked to complete the series. And on the right, it's part of the creativity questionnaire where participants were able to rate themselves uh, based on their ability to utilize their creativity in their life. So participant, uh, participants completed the experiment and we found that there was a moderate positive correlation between their abstract points and their creativity points. And we found that we had a R value of 0.51 and the results suggest a potential relationship between abstract and creative thinking points. And so our study found a moderate correlation between abstract and creative thinking. This indicates a potential linkage between the two modes of thinking. This finding has significant implications for understanding cognitive functions and reasoning, particularly in the creative training fields. The study highlights the potential use of an indicator test to assess one's ability to think about abstract concepts in the workforce, particularly for higher learning processes. However, the study is limited due to its small sample size and narrow scope of focus when assessing those creative abilities. Future research should explore the relationship between abstract and creative thinking in more detail and better understand how to foster and develop creative thinking. These are my references, and the next slide is my acknowledgement for all the participants. I express my sincere gratitude, and special thanks to Dr. Stevenson for his help in facilitating the study, providing the necessary resources, and I'd like to thank all our family and friends for support.
required uh, to build from jobs such as design engineers, artists, and uh, many other factors that play within the, uh, the theory of the work. So along with that, with um, the self-evaluation of creativity, um, did you analyze with regard to gender or ethnicity whether people have differences in their own rating? I mean, uh, they showed that, for instance, when men and women approach um, jobs, that women have to uh, feel that they're adequate at all the different descriptions, and men feel like if they're adequate at 50%, that that's enough. And so I'm just wondering if, um, if there are any differences in the background that might impact some of the self language. Oh, I did not explore the differences between gender and race, as this questionnaire was completely anonymous about, sorry, I can't speak today, anonymously. Um, and so I guess that was one other facet that could be explored for future research. Any other questions for Matthew? Oh, well, thank you everyone for your questions. Thank you. College of Osteopathic Medicine in Tennessee. Congratulations, Emily. 